Hello, in this video series we're going to be looking at nodes and understanding texturing. In this particular episode we're looking at just a basic introduction and understanding what nodes are and how we can set up materials in cycles and node based engines. Now if you're watching this in the future you might be in Blender 2.8. Everything should be pretty much the same, just the interface might be slightly different. I'll be using cycles to learn the nodes but EV, the render engine, is also node based so all that you learn will be very relevant there too. Also this series is part of a much bigger course on gabbit.co.uk where you can go right through from beginner to advanced so do check that out and lastly you can support me on Patreon, links in the description. It is quite important that you've had a look at the intro to texturing video that I've already done that will explain the basics of nodes and why we use them. This video is much more how we use them. So how do we get to nodes? Well let's pull up the timeline by clicking on the line between the two windows and I'll change the timeline to the node editor down here in the bottom left corner and choose node editor. Now initially you won't see anything because I haven't changed over to cycles so let's quickly do that now. Blender render cycles if you're in 2.8 cycles is still there and it should be very similar in Eevee. Now because I started off in Blender render it doesn't know that I want to use nodes and there's a use node tick box down here. If you were already in cycles then you should just be able to see this without a problem. If you do get stuck at any point and you mess up all your nodes, just close the material down and create a new one and you'll be back to the starting point. I'm going to press N to get rid of the menu at the end here and let's zoom in and see what we've got so far. I'll pull this up a bit further, we only need to see the cube and also I want to be in rendered mode so any changes I make in here I'll see the live update. So I'll change it to render mode here, it's currently in solid mode and I want to change it to rendered mode. Now we've got a grey background so this looks very grey even though we've got a white colour here. You can see if I change the colour that the cube changes. So this is how we can change the colour of our cube nice and simply. So that explains the colour input. This is what we call a shader and this is the material output. I don't know any reason you'd want to change this so you'll always have a shader going into the material output and most of the time, especially as a beginner, it will be into surface. So let's just take a quick look at a node. On the left hand side you have the inputs and on the right hand side you have the outputs. So if I hook these two nodes up with what's known as a noodle, the diffuse node is now the input for the material output. So everything is going from left to right. So let's look at other shaders. This is a diffuse. It offers a very rough texture with no reflection. The shortcut is Shift A and then Shader. You can also go Add, Shader down the bottom here. Now there's lots of different types. Let's get the glossy and I'll just put it above for now and let's add a different one as well, shader, glass and add shader, principal BSDF. Now that was added in 2.79 so make sure you've got your up to date version if you don't see that. So I'll bring that one in as well and I'll put it there for the time being. When I plug each of these in we should see a slightly different effect. So the glass shader it goes completely invisible and I can change the colour of the glass slightly and that should help it a bit. Looks a bit odd at the moment but don't worry about that. The glossy shader should be shiny but because we've got a grey background it's just reflecting grey and I'll come on to the principal shader in a second. So the important thing when you're testing shaders and seeing what they do is to have some sort of background so you can see the reflectivity and maybe a floor just to see how it's impacted by the objects around it. So I'm just going to quickly set that up. So I've added a plane and I'm going to add an HDR background. These are all in my earlier tutorials. I'll put a link in the description and a card in the corner now and I'm adding an environment texture and now when I go to rendered mode we've got some sort of texture that we can see there. Our materials now have a bit more realism. So back to my object and let's just go into solid mode with shift Z and make sure the cube is selected. Back into rendered mode, shift Z and my cube selected so whatever I change in here will affect that material. So perhaps if you're following along you could try out the different shaders for yourself. So add shader and then hook them up to the material output. So now you can see the effect of the diffuse. It's not got any reflectivity and changing the colour simply changes the colour. The roughness you won't notice too much at the moment and I'll go over roughness later. Now if I connect up the glossy you can see it's nice and shiny and I can change the colour there. And in this case the roughness does make a big difference to the reflectivity. Another term you'll hear is glossiness, it's the opposite of roughness. So when it's got no roughness at all it's really shiny as you can see on the top there it's reflecting that. And if I go to 100% rough it is reflecting in some degree but it's a very rough reflection. Let's have a look at the glass again. 
not much difference there and it looks very unusual because it's a cube shape. Now I will go over the principal shader in a second but for now I just want to explain how you can mix these shaders together. So if I just bring this across here, Shift A to add, Shader, Mix Shader. If you've got a node grabbed, which you always do when you add and move over a noodle, it will connect it up. And if you want to break the nodes, you can control left click and cut. So I'm gonna add a new shader, Shift A, Shader, and I'll go for a transparent shader this time. So I'll put that there, and let's have a glossy and transparent mix. So let's hook those up and make sure my shader goes to the surface output. And you can see it's slightly shiny, let's bring that right down, and slightly transparent. And that's because my factor, or the amount of mix, is at 50% or 0.5. So if I go all the way to transparent, that's the bottom one, you can see it disappears, and all the way back to glossy, and it reappears. So that's how we mix nodes together. And you'll probably see complex node trees, if I move this down here, of lots of mixed nodes going into each other. So let's get these two. I'll duplicate this with Shift D and bring these two together. Now I've got a mix of diffuse and glossy, then being mixed with the transparent. So that's when it starts getting a bit confusing. That's how we mix shaders in node-based editing. So where you'll be used to having these three on top of each other if you use Photoshop, for example, they have to be mixed and then into a mix and then into a mix and so forth to have your layers, as it were. So this is much like layers, these mixed shaders. Don't panic if you don't understand that yet. It will make more sense as we go along. Mixing shaders like this is quite advanced. And since the introduction of the principled BSDF shader, it's become a lot simpler and we don't have to mix our shaders together so much anymore. So let's go back to just the diffuse. Now at the moment, these are just shaders, but we've got no images or textures coming into them yet. So it's got a very flat color. So what we need to do to add texture to this is add a color, add some kind of image into the color. So let's do that now, Shift A to add, and then we've got textures. So there's shaders and there's textures. And let's just bring in a noise texture for now, and I'll hook the color, which is the yellow, up to the yellow. And you can see it goes all noisy. And there's lots of things I can change here, like the scale of the noise and so forth. So your first challenge then is to experiment with each of the different textures. So Shift A, Texture, and have a look at each of these textures and see what they do. So pause the video and come back in a second. Okay, so hopefully you've had a go at plugging in these procedural textures as they're known. And what you may have come across if I press Shift A is Texture and there's Image Texture. So if I bring that in, this is where you can get your own image and paste it onto your object. So I'll do that now, I'll press Open, go to my texture library and just pick a random texture. So let's hook that up, move these out the way and you'll notice nothing's happening. That's because I've not unwrapped my box. So Blender doesn't know how this texture is supposed to be put onto the different sides of the box. If you need to know more about unwrapping then look at the card in the corner at the moment and check out the earlier tutorials. So let's go into solid mode with Shift Z, into edit mode and then press U to unwrap and we'll just do a smart UV project for now back into object mode with tab and back into rendered mode with shift Z. And you can see it pops up, there's my texture. The difference with our image textures as opposed to these what are known as procedural textures, most of these procedural textures don't need to be unwrapped, but your image texture does. Let's delete these two for now. And I want to show you how you can mix textures together, which is slightly different to mixing shaders. If I press shift A and I'll go to color, Mix RGB, and then bring that in, and hook the two colors up. You can see they've mixed together. If I zoom in a bit, you can see those two mixed, and if I push it all the way up, it gets the bottom one, all the way back, and it gets the noise, and I'm in the middle there. Now those of you that are familiar with blending layers, maybe you come from a program like Photoshop, you've got lots of blending layers here as well, and the way you can blend between these two. But that's for another time. Lastly, I'm going to talk about the principal shader. So let's unhook these and hook the principal shader up. And I think I'll delete these now by shift right clicking and then pressing delete. Now I've got my principal shader plugged in and this is one you'll probably be using a lot. It's a PBR shader, it's physically based rendering and it gives realistic results. The main categories that you want to look at, of course, the color and you can change the color there. Metallic, how metallic it is. And this should either be one for metallic or zero. You can experiment in the middle, but if you want realistic looking objects, 
is either one or zero. So let's create a gold material somewhere around there. And let's bring the roughness down, which is the shininess. And there's our sort of gold material. I'll just add a subdivision surface to this by pressing control three and bring this down and set it to smooth just so you can see the ball like shape and now it looks a bit more like gold. So control three adds a subdivision surface modifier. Hopefully you remember that from the previous lessons. So color, metallic and roughness, of course, as I've just gone through. The last one is the normals and that's the bumpiness. Most of these shaders have a normal slot, so I'll just show you the diffuse again. And there's the normal. And that's where our bump node goes. I'll delete that for now. So let's shift A. And it's worth pointing out there's a search option. So if you do know the name, you can just type that in. The bump node is under vector. And you'll either have a normal map or a bump map. I'm going to choose a bump map for now. Bump maps allow you to take in image textures that are black and white or color, but it does convert them to black and white. Whereas a normal map is very specific texture that is red, green, and blue that has height information within it. But if you just want to use your texture as a bump, then you'll need to use the bump node. So let's bring in our image by going texture, image texture. And if I click on those double arrows, I can get my wood that I was using earlier. I'll plug that into the height, plug the normal into the normal, and you can see that having an effect there. So we've got some strange looking golden wood. So your exercise for now is to try out the principal shader and try and get different effects. So perhaps have five different subdivided cubes, unwrapped of course, and just experiment with the different effects. So changing the color, metallic, roughness, and maybe putting a bump material. So that's just the basic introduction. In the next sessions, we'll be going into more detail about how you can mix these up. And there'll also be some exercises to try and create different materials. Thanks for watching.